Five signs it's time to replace your home plumbing system. Now, would you ever need to replace your home plumbing system? There's some things that could make that happen, but you may be getting sold that whether you really need it or not. So stay till the end and make sure you understand the things you need to know. If you find great value here and you love having your opinion be heard, do me a favor, please subscribe, like, and share this video with anybody that you know that may get some value out of it. So how old are your plumbing pipes? Think about it, how old is your house? Copper pipes are actually designed to last 70 to 80 years. So if your house is 70 to 80 years old, it may be getting time to where you have to look at the idea of possibly changing them. Now cast iron pipe, cast iron pipe is designed to last 50 to 100 years above the ground. Now when it's installed underground, that life expectancy actually gets cut shorter because the ground is moist. You've got oxidation, you've got things that can lead to rust and corrosion. So it could be even shorter. Now, they say PVC is rated for 100 years or more. And to be honest, I've dug up cast iron pipes that look like they've been around that long and still look great. So the ground soil, everything like that has a lot to do with it. And then steel pipe, some old steel pipe from gas lines has actually been under the ground 50, 60, 70 years from some old houses here in my area. They're only designed to last 30 to 50 years. And that again is above the ground. Now make sure you stay till the end and I will answer two questions in two minutes to give you a little extra information. So the first thing is you need to know how old are your plumbing pipes, but then there's other things to look at. On your sewer line, on your water line, are you having any leaks? Meaning, do you have any roots get in your system? Do you have any foundation problems? Is your house actually shifting or anything like that? Are there problems that may be telling you you may have water under your slab? Think about it. If you have water leaking out of your sewer line or your water line, that ground, especially here in the North Texas area, that ground is going to swell, it's gonna expand, it's gonna shift, or in summertime, maybe you don't have a leak, but it's real dry, the ground will still shift and cause foundation problems. You might wanna check out your sewer and water system to see if you have a leak. It's a very simple test, and we've actually got a video showing how we do it, and it's something most homeowners could do themselves. But you want to determine, do you have a leak under your house? If you do, it may be time to start looking at things. Now, that's on the sewer water side. On the gas side, do you smell gas? Do you smell gas kind of a faint smell every time you pull up at your house? You could have a yard service, or if you've got an old Pyram Beam house, maybe you've got gas leaks under there. These are things you wanna really be aware of and think about because that could mean you do have problems that need to be addressed. And we'll talk more about it later, but instead of just fixing one leak, it may be smart to change the entire system. On your water system, are you showing any signs of discoloration? Now, that could just be a water heater, or it could just be that you've got old pipes, and by the time the water gets through everything, it's picking up all this scale, all this buildup. You get calcium and magnesium that builds up on the inside of some pipes. And if you've got an older piping system and you've made modifications since then, you could actually have electrolysis created by two dissimilar metals. Maybe back then someone just screwed a copper fitting into a galvanized pipe and that could lead to problems. So what kind of system do you have and are you aware of it? Are you looking at it? Is your drainage system, is it cast iron? Is it PVC? What pipes do you have or do you even know? Prior to the 70s, pretty much everything was cast iron. Late 70s, early 80s here in Texas, we started shifting over to PVC. Now, the town that I grew up in, Garland, I remember the inspector saying we will never use PVC underground because they thought that it would break. Now, it's pretty much all we ever use underground. So let's break this down two different ways. The things that could tell you you may need to replace pipes in your system. You may be able to make a spot repair or you may need to replace the entire system. But if you are having leaks on your system, think about it. If you've got an old cast iron system and it's leaking, if you've got leaks in one area, it's possible you have leaks in other areas areas. So it may be worth it to isolate the system to see what things look like. On a sewer system, you can also run a camera down. What does it look like? Does your system look good from the inside? And you're not going to be able to look at the outside because it's buried under the ground, but it's something worth at least running a camera through to see what condition is the system in. 
Now PVC pipe's a little bit different. It's gonna last longer. You still may wanna run a camera through it to see if you have any breaks, to see if you have any separations, anything like that. If you've had foundation work, or maybe your house has just shifted, you could actually pull a joint apart or if it was installed properly, it could be on a bind and a pipe or fitting could actually break. So that's where you'd have problems on your drainage system. On your water system, is your system copper? Is it an older system? Is it galvanized? Anything like that. Like I talked about a while ago, I gave you the life expectancy of some different materials, but to be honest, the ground conditions could change that. If you're in an area where the soils have chemicals in them, there could be a problem, and we deal with this a lot in certain areas of town, that literally we think the ground contributes to the rapid decay of the pipe. So you need to understand what system you have and what it's made of. Now water line, the galvanized, the copper, copper's gonna last longer, but if somebody's added onto a galvanized system, that could be problems. And if you've got low water pressure, is that because you've got a PEC system in that has too many fittings in it that's reducing the flow? Or do you have an old galvanized system and you're starting to get such a buildup inside that you're never gonna get good pressure through it again? There are times, there are reasons where you may need to replace the entire system. Sometimes, if it's just a leak, you may be able to go in and just make a repair. So are there any things you can do to help maintain your plumbing system? Don't put things down the sewer line you're not supposed to. And on your water system, are you flushing your water heater annually? Do you have an anti-scale device or a water filtration system? These are things that can not only help keep your pipes and fittings in good condition, but also the valves and the appliances that you hook up to them. And one thing that I'm gonna tell you, you probably wanna look at, talk to your neighbors. Are they having the same problems you're having? If your neighbors are all replacing their sewer lines, there's a possibility yours may need to be replaced too. Let's do two questions in two minutes. Michael Taylor says, as a plumber in the Pacific Northwest, why do you do slab on grade and not post and beam or floor joists? Well, Dallas used to do almost everything on what we called pier and beam. Then we went to slab on grade. Why they've done it, I can't tell you. I think it's tough for a homeowner because if there ever is a plumbing problem, they do have to tunnel up underneath to fix the problem. But it's a lot cheaper too because now you don't have to come in build the frame around it and spend all that extra money on the floor joists and the piers. What they do, literally put forms up around, plumb everything in underground, cover it back up, then pour the slab, and then you build everything above from there. Why they do it? It's probably cheaper. I'm just a plumber, so I don't know. Next question is from Mexico Soldier. Thank you for asking the question. It says, hi, Roger. What do you advise if a house needs both foundation repair and slab leak repair? Which one should be done first? Mexico Soldier, this is a great question and this is one that we deal with a lot. And I've actually consulted with foundation companies to verify my thoughts. And here's what it is. To be honest, get the foundation work done first. You wanna go ahead and get the house leveled up. If you're gonna be raising floors and doing anything like that, you really don't wanna put a stress on the plumbing system after it's been repaired. You wanna get everything up in place first, then let the plumber come in and make the repair. And I'll even go one step further. Actually, after the foundation work is done, get the plumber in soon. That way he can see where the holes are drilled, where the piers are, where everything is done, and maybe, he won't have to dig anything additional. Maybe he'll be able to get to what he needs to using those holes. I hope these questions help. Michael Taylor and Mexico Soldier, I do appreciate y'all writing in with questions. Anyway, if you've got questions, go to twoquestions2minutes.com and ask your question there. I'm Roger Wakefield, Lead AP, the expert plumber. I'll see you in the next video if you don't get flushed.